How do you feel about Van Tyson? I've been single for three years. So. What? Yeah. Obviously, I was talking to one. Really, this rumor must be true. What rumor? That you dated one of the guys from Major League. I, I heard, I heard, I heard, you know, you got a couple of, like words to say for a couple of people in the industry. Like who? Seema. Is Seema in the industry? Make G plants shit and then it blows out. Physically, I really like either buff or chubby. I don't like, I don't do skinny. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I can't. Like, the skinny niggas are not for me. I'm sorry. Like, Anati and Casper. Uh, Those are chubby. Ish. Never mind. Let's close this. <laughs> I think people think I'm an asshole. I was really depressed for like two years. Like, yo, I was actually about to quit my career. But There's no one that I take as competition. The Brenda and Lebu, SA does not have that level of consistency from Hans. All right, y'all, welcome back, LT the podcast. New year, new things, but you know what I'm saying? The team is still the same. Shout out to Crap Protect, keeping us fresh all year. You know, the pants is Alpha Industries, the hoodie is Alpha Industries. Let's go, baby. This is what we're here for. It's yeah. the LT the podcast. Yeah. Jo, 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 Jo. Ha, ha, ha. I just been here. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. I'll do it for you. Um, <laughs> okay, let's, let's do it. Yeah. Let's switch it up. Season two, episode one, come on, Pella, Al Tito podcast. Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> we back, baby. What's up? Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> it's been so long. We miss you guys so much. Oh, my God. Um, I guess it's too late for me to be saying Happy New Year, um, but I will say compliments of the season. Um, welcome back. Welcome back, guys, um, to the LTO podcast. We're in great spirits. Um, we are about to bring you guys the best content this year. Thank you for everybody that supported us last year, but we're on to bigger things this year. Uh, talking about bigger things this year, uh, we have a phenomenal guest uh, joining us for the first episode this year um she's a dancer she's an artist and um she's exceptionally looking beautiful for this episode so without further ado make some noise for come on Pella. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thanks so, hi how are you i'm good how are you can't complain i'm in good spirits what's happening happy new year um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year to you too. Thank you so much. What's happening? Um, thank you for joining us. Um, you know? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> She's nervous. She thinks I'm going to ask her. Like, I just got so nervous. I'm like, what is this one up to? <laughs> like, ish. You know, me, like, this podcast is always just like, we kick back here. You know, we just have like some dope conversations. So okay. We have nothing to worry about. All right, it's fine. You know, I'm it's a good boy. Everyone knows that. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the whole team just pulled the face like, lies, it's fine. <laughs> What's actually, up? Let me ask you, like, before we even start the interview, yeah. how was your festive season, actually? I should be asking. Uh, festive season, we were just working, man. You know, December's always hectic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just work and trauma and work. There's really nothing much. Um, I think for me, I really wanted it to be more of like family. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, got to get the grind. What do you mean trauma and work? What do you mean? Like, you, I, can't, I can't just walk ish, past that. Ish. What do you mean trauma and work? What do you trauma mean? and work is in like now you're realizing you have to make certain changes with the people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. But dope because so many doors have been opened and new opportunities are coming. Okay. Yeah, that's the realest so way I can put it. So you have a it. new team, basically. Yeah, I had to get a new team. So you fired, man. Like, <laughs> are you firing people in uh, December? Uh, like, uh, we just like, began. We just <laughs> arrived. He's already getting for it. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking, the guy's expecting a 13th check. No. Like a bonus, and he's getting I fired. I did give them, it? like, the bonus thing, in fact. So I'm getting a bonus, then you fired the guy. No. Ish. What when I know now? 
Wow. Ish, ish, ish. I know. Like, I just arrived. Okay. No, you took me there. I couldn't, you, you, can't, you can't say I experienced trauma and I just act like I didn't hear it. I mean, it's the realest thing at the same time because I'm being real, yeah. you know? So I did give my team bonuses and whatever, but the That's situation nice. just became a bit sticky and maybe I just learned there's a couple of things that I need to fix on my side as well, just as somebody, like an employer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that, self-accountability. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people always say women have no accountability. So when you say you have a couple of things to fix, then I see that yeah. you actually also look at yourself. Besides, yeah. I'm the mandem, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. For real? Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> okay, let's start in the beginning. Yeah. Um, you grew up in Soweto, right? Zola Mdeni. Zola, to be specific. Zola Mdeni, to be specific. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's dope. So you grew up in Soweto. When you were a young girl growing up in Soweto, yeah, um, like what was like your dreams? Like, is this what you envisioned when you were like a little young girl? Is this what you, way, is this where you think you'd be? Um, well, Zolam Deni, obviously I was born like, okay, I grew up at Zolam Deni, but I later moved to the suburbs, but my mom still stayed there. I think I actually wanted to be an actress. Wait, so... You moved to the suburbs and you left your mom there? Yeah, like when I was three. I didn't leave my mom, but uh, my mom and dad had to split up. Mm -hmm. So obviously my dad at that man the time had the chunks to give me like... Obvious. Uh, it's so obvious. Your dad was bawling? Yeah, no, my dad wasn't bawling, but like yeah. if we're looking at life, uh, my mom got me at a pretty young age. She mm -hmm. was like 18. Okay. So obviously my dad could actually take care of me more financially. Yeah. So he took care of me and could take me to like the top schools. You see how I speak now? It's because of my dad's decisions. The twanging. You know, yeah, the right. twanging and the everything, you know, <laughs> that congra. Okay. So, yeah. But so, I what used was to, your dad doing, actually? My dad was actually part of YFM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he used to work part of YFM, and he actually has, has his own company as well. Video nice and film. YFM. I don't know. I wouldn't lie. You. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was only three. <laughs> I can't remember everything. Okay. Yeah. So, like, would people watching this know who your dad is? Um, Onisha Sampila, yeah. That's his name. Okay. Mr. O. Mr. O. Yeah. Okay. Shout out, Mr. O. What's up? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So you moved in with your dad? Yeah, I moved in with mm -hmm. my dad, but I used to visit my mom quite frequently. Mm -hmm. But what's crazy, I wanted to be an actress. My dad helped me out. I was actually an extra on Scandal. Yeah. I, thought, I saw something that you were also extra on as Sibaya. Is that true? No, not as Sibaya, okay. but more sc like I did Scandal and then I did some movie that was playing on SABC2. And then for me, like, during the progress, I'm realizing, yo, these people take the stuff five times. Like, I can't do one thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I just told my dad. And I only used to get, like, paid 300 as a as a person, like, an extra. How about so 300? What, what did you do as an extra? As an extra, it's like, you just walk past. Like, wow, wow, cafe. Like, like, they'll just tell you, okay, go that side, and then come to the side. At first, it was a real thing. You didn't thing. even get, like, one word, like, hi. Like, no. You just walked past. I just walked, but now seeing the actors going through, like, because I used to get frustrated, to be quite honest, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, they need to, whatever they need to redo or whatever lines they would have messed up, mm -hmm. I need to now walk back time, like, three times walk again. again. Yeah, just because of one person. Yo. So I can't do that. So I just like, I so can't. So you were gymming at work, basically? Yeah, like, yo, rawo, cafe, la. like one line, mm -hmm. like, I will have one, yeah. So that's I just, dope. yeah. That, like, that's, that's dope, because a lot of people these days are just looking for instant gratification. Yeah. They think like, yo, once I get on, I'm supposed to be a superstar from the beginning. That's true. Um, and it's dope for you to show that, look, I started on a TV show where I just walked. Yeah. <laughs> I had no lines, you know what I'm saying? I was like, come on, Peta, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, uh, and it's important right now for people to know that gradually get there. It's going to start true. with steps and steps and steps until you, okay, then that your, I guess that was your first, like, I guess, passion. Yeah. You, I understand you also studied at Boston. Yeah. It's true. Guys. Like, I do my homework. Like, I'm a that's professional. That's crazy. Okay. Like, please respect me. Ooh. Okay. And, <laughs> Um, what were you doing? What were you studying at Boston? Uh, I really forgot, to be quite honest. I what? blew up. Guys, let me tell you how I forgot. Wait, don't judge me, you know? Okay, wait, wait, wait. How long ago was this? This was 2019. How you forgot, like, something that happened, like, Because I didn't actually study it the whole year. I blew up, like, 
six months into it. So I didn't finish my course, that's why. And you don't remember your course? No. And also for me personally, I just feel like, guys, if you're gonna do, no, I'm coming at people now, but. No, say it. If we're mind. gonna, I just really wish those colleges really taught us about business because a lot of stuff that I did inside the class is not real life. Like being an artist, they could have taught me like, okay, learn how to do this with your business, tax, like real life stuff apart mm -hmm. from, okay, camera. But it, depends, but it depends what you study. So you felt like whatever you were learning was not productive for what you want ah, to do. Don't put words in my mouth. Okay, what are you saying? All I am saying is I just wish they, if we're doing certain things in third year, right? Obviously the first year is more about finding yourself. Second year you get into choosing your subjects, but I just also would appreciate the business aspect from first year in case people do tend to drop out. Like that should actually be part of the course of do you look tax you guys like taxes are a real thing. Like they it they is. behind us. You know they're what I'm saying? Playing. They're not playing. So if I was if if I was a different student who decided to drop out in second year, that means I wouldn't have gotten to the real life stuff. How did your parents feel about like um, you dropping out? Ah, talk to you like 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 no. I mean, you have gigs. It's mm -hmm. it's five k. It's this. It's that. Now you can actually provide for moms. You can give something for dad. And obviously, you were studying to get where you are. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I think you're even trying to be humble about Dr. Chet again. I think Kamu is getting like that real, real, real. No, Dog, I was. She's getting that real. My bad. rate was like 2.5 at that time, 2019. So you started with Kila. at 2.5, for real? Yeah, I was like, I was on 2.5. I think Kila was on 15. Yeah. Yeah, but that that was like the situation. I was so on 2.5. Tell me that, like you said, you started at 2.5. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell me the gradual build. How does it get to. <laughs> gets the like I, and i'm loving the fact that you are like because it's kind of like educational to the young artists that are yeah. starting out because some people feel like ah me i'm hot man i, I deserve this yeah. amount of money or yeah. whatever from the beginning yeah um tell me the steps from the 2.5 to you gradually building up so to be quite honest i yeah. would give the business credit to major league so when I was busy with Jove, I wasn't really getting paid. For me, I didn't even know that artists got paid big amounts. Okay. And then I only realized when uh, one of the major league boys were like, yo, bro, why can't you actually do your nails? Wobble. And then I was just <laughs> like, hey, dog, uh, I can't do my nails because I don't have guap. Yeah. And then he was like, okay, but like, what is your rate? What is your actual booking? I didn't even know about booking rates. So major wow, league really put crazy. me on like with business. <laughs> yeah. And then he was like, no, dog, the industry works like one, you two, like, three. He's like, like, it's like major league is like one person. No, no, no. Like, obviously I was talking to one. Oh, okay. It's not obvious. If I'm speaking on a single person, it's obviously one person. Because okay, major league is a duo. Uh, yo, Jesus. <laughs> Side eye. <laughs> no, I mean, we want to know which one was giving you advice. Mm -mm. Both the boys were giving me advice, but okay. now I'm speaking about who was actually just letting me know about the yeah. specifics of, okay, this is how the business works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see now. <laughs> okay, so I mean, clearly this rumor must be true. What rumor? That you dated one of the guys from Major League. No, if, that's if, if you are like reacting like that when I'm just asking like a simple question. To you, it's a simple question, but to me, obviously, because I know what's been said in the streets. So Are you saying that's Cap? I'm saying that's Cap. Say it like with a straight face. I'm calling Cap. In, I'm calling Cap. Look straight in my face and say that. I'm calling Cap. Say, I come on Pella never. Cabelo, cabelo, amon. I think Cap was capping, but we'll move on. Why do you feel like I'm capping? Because like, even just me asking who gave you advice, you already felt like... You know, because I'm aware of everything that's happening. Okay. There's already rumors, so if I'm gonna now pick one, mm -hmm. it's now gonna go into like, oh, like it's a real thing. The okay. same way you thought. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, like talking about, have you dated anyone in the industry? Yeah, I have. Okay. Yeah. How was the experience? Shitty. Shitty? Yeah, yo, you guys are bad, eh? Yo, yo, don't put me in there, like. You yo. in the industry, are you not? No, I'm like, I'm the most amazing, like, wholesome, <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm For me, it's the cost just laughing right now. Like, nobody, that's Cap. I'm, I'm like, very cap. wholesome. Like, all the, <laughs> the mummies know about me. 
Um, so <laughs> how was your experience? Like, did you mind giving us a name? Who did you date? Who was no, this guy? No, I can't do that. You kept, it, you kept it a secret, like. I'm keeping it a secret because huh? my business has never been out, but I've, I have, I have. How been. long, how long did you guys date? Uh, we were together for a year or two years. Nah, she can't keep a secret for a year or two. Come on, guys. Who is this guy that Kamon Pella dated? In Nobody show? knows, guys. Okay, give us a clue. Did he, what, was he doing music? I'm not saying nothing. Was he doing music? Let me sip was my act, drink. Was he an actor? Mm. Uh, soccer player. Mm. Um, soccer player. Which which soccer player do you think Kamon Pella can, can date? I don't like soccer players. I don't why? like soccer. You don't know why don't you like soccer? Like why are you kicking the ball around the field? I don't get it. No offense. <laughs> like, what kind of guys do you actually like? Um, like physic, 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 physically and mentally. Yeah. Physically, I really like either buff or chubby. Yeah. I don't like. I don't do skinny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I can't. Like the skinny niggas are not for me. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> no offense. Um, need to look good. <laughs> Oh, what is he saying? <laughs> no, I can't. Like, no offense, guys. I just, it's, no. <laughs> Why buffer chubby? Buffer chubby because you need to feel secure. So it's either a cushion or. <laughs> and. <laughs> yeah, imagine, like, now I need to fight or somebody's coming at me. I need a tall. So you think skinny guys can fight? I didn't say that. Don't put words in my mouth. Yeah, but you say. I mean, the skinny people can fight. Like, there's yeah. nothing wrong. You guys are yeah. amazing and beautiful. What do you mean, you but guys? But just I'm not skinny. for me. <laughs> <laughs> are you not skinny? No, I'm not skinny. So what are you? But nobody said you're skinny. Yeah, I'm not skinny. I'm like in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm buff and chubby. It depends. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> No, man. Like, yeah. you, need a, you need to feel at home. I'm a small girl, so yeah. So that's actually, that's crazy. Like, I heard, like, I was talking about Casper. Casper was saying, like, girls, like, 2023, 2024, they actually like chubby guys. Like, it's like the new in thing. No, like, I've you are been. actually confirming it. I've been from 2019. For real? You've been yeah. loving chubby niggas? Chubby or buff, yeah. This yeah really chubby like... niggas is, is up, huh? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There's the difference between fat and chubby. Oh, okay. What's chubby and fat? Please give us an experience. Chubby is like you just look cute and you're just bigger than the is normal size. Is there a chubby size. guy we can use so people know that, like maybe a not famous guy that people know? Like, oh, yeah, he's uh, chubby. chubby guy who's famous. Hmm. Is Rick Ross fat or chubby? Nah, he's too thick for me, honestly. How oh, thick? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's two guys in South Africa that call themselves sexy chubbies. Anati and Casper. Uh, Those are chubby. Ish. Never mind. Let's close this. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tell all the tea? I mean, I really don't. I really like both their body types, to be quite honest. You like both their body types? Yeah, I like their body Jeff. types are, but just a bit slimmer. Oh. Yeah, just like two, three sizes down. Okay. Yeah. We, we got derailed by a minute. Um, how do we gradually build a brand uh, to, to, the, to the place where you're actually getting more money? Um, I think for me, a lot of music helps, a lot of brand alignment, a lot of building who you are. So like Shop Gabumpela was, first seen as a dancer, but to actually switch into being seen as an artist, there's a lot of sacrifice that I had to give, right? Mm -hmm. So in senses of, I had had to lose campaigns to not just do dancer stuff, apart from just like, okay, if you want me as Kamon Pella to dance for your campaign, make sure you put my song on so I can actually dance for my song and Kamon Pella for the challenge to trend. That's so yeah, that was, yeah, that was how I was going about it, but also affiliation because I really feel like Building a brand is not easy, but if you have the right things to do it, like more of your name coming out, mm -hmm. I had to now sell a certain perspective, mm -hmm. and that is what brand is. You sell a certain perspective of yourself of, okay, I am this girl, 
I am the girl with the dances. Like, mm -hmm. but my, but like, you take me seriously. Even promoters, like, I used to have an H1, né? When I pulled up with the Vitas, it's different. Oh, right. I used to park inside the venue. Okay. Now it's like, okay, promoters are seeing, okay, this hand is serious because, mm -hmm. I mean, at the at that point, it's like no piano person apart from Bori, like the really big people, mm -hmm. with the Vitas. So I was like, all the piano guys driving. I don't know. At that time, I was on our H1. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of us were moving H1. And then it was only, when I remember, it was only Foka, Pori, and Meiji League. Oh, shit. I just realized something. Kamu was our very first piano guest on the podcast. Let's clap it up. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's dope. Thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So I just had to sell the perception of, okay, please take me seriously. Because okay. now when you realize if I bring my rate up, it's not only performance, but you seeing that I'm coming up with six dances uh -huh. and you're also seeing that the value of the car that I drive is way more. So it's like you sell a perception for people to take you seriously. Now I had to dance in an LV shoe for people to be like, hey, she has money. Mm -hmm. That time it's like, maybe that's my only LV shoe, but mm -hmm. what you're selling is what people are going to catch on to. And then it actually helped me. And then now the music, like the music is really important. But I think for brand, it's what you sell for people to bite into. Okay. Yeah. So you feel like you wearing an expensive brand somehow um, makes people take you serious. Is that, is that, is that, I, think is that everybody, I think everybody works with perception. So yeah. if I'm going to arrive here in a Porsche, are you not going to think I have money? And are you, okay, wait, no, sort of KB, no, right? Most people are going to think, that, are gonna yeah. think I have money. Yeah. But now if I put a rate forward of, okay, shop, I'm in a Porsche, I'm looking dapper, mm -hmm. I'm here with like eight people, eight niggas that are coming out of two cars. Mm -hmm. And this is my rate, apart from just the work. Mm -hmm. Already the position gives, okay, shop. I get where the money's going to, mm -hmm. right? And then now when you come with your work in terms of personality, dressing, they see, okay, you're not just wearing a denim jean, you're actually wearing something that is made. Everybody, I mean, every business person, when your you look outfit, at a business person, yeah, actually, outfits are different, right? That, your outfit is actually kind of dope today. Thank you. Looking good. Uh, yeah, you just have to like, I think for me, one thing I'll give credit to B, she always looks expensive. There's no way you're going to disregard Bonang's character or her brand because it always gives a certain level of posh clean. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if you actually look at those people, because I'm very observant in the industry, mm -hmm. Major League, they always give clean. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to move kind of different uh, to really sell yourself. I the guy from Major League, guys. Don't... Don't say you didn't hear it from me. Oh, yet, Jesus. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Jesus. <laughs> Who must I say? Who must I say? Focalistic. Okay. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. You just have to sell it. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Um, Do you I agree think, or disagree? Yeah, I agree. It goes um, in hand. It, like, you know, it, it, it complements each other. You, you can't just have, like, the music. You yeah. have to have the music and you're going to have to have all the other attributes to it yeah. and like style fashion AKA, how you carry yourself looks good aka was a villain in the streets like he he set that whole thing up mm -hmm. of yo i need my character to give like the super cook, cocky guy but when you interacted with him in real life what it was a you? switch yeah. you know what i'm saying but it's a perception game that's all you need to give talking about aka he actually mentioned you on a song yeah um what um you got a couple of dances. Mbuzi. Now you think you come on pad. How yeah. did you feel when you heard that? Because you had passed away when that song yeah, came out. Yeah, I appreciated that for real. Yeah. I think the like the craziest thing for me is both him and Costa did that. Uh, when Costa passed away as well, like it was a thing of Costa mentioned me on a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. AKA did the same thing. I never thought it was really like that. I won't like lie. What? Like, I I never really thought that he rated my. Um, my craft like that to actually put me on a song because not a lot of people on aka songs i don't think he mentions a lot of people mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that was like okay i think he's a goat so i it's really appreciate that yeah mm -hmm. it's like oh. before he checked out i was there that was crazy yeah oh yeah you guys were also at some gig ne? yeah we yeah. were in a gig mm -hmm. in bloom that's actually the first time where i got to chill with him mm -hmm. and the whole character is like okay now when he's talking it's like the person that we were chilling with and the actual person that he per perceives himself to be mm -hmm. is quite different. But mm -hmm. when uh, Nivo started managing me, Nivo Moda, he actually let me know, like, no, this guy was actually like a character. Mm. You know, like, that's why he liked wrestling. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, so it's kind of dope. What would you say is, like, the best part 
about being gum on Pella? Yeah. And what is the worst part of being, being gum? I think the best part about being gum on Pella, I can actually fully give my creative to the world mm -hmm. and then people can actually accept it and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. The worst thing is I can't actually really be myself towards people. You can't be yourself towards yeah. people. Why, why are you saying that? Why can't you um, be Because there's already a certain perception of Kamonpela. I can't like if I'm the papa. Like I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm usually that girl, like yeah. loud, really like just everywhere. Yeah. But um, when people have a certain perception of you, it's kind of hard because how papa doesn't mean I still don't deserve your respect, mm -hmm. right? So I think the biggest thing I had to deal with is people's perception of me kind of became a big thing. Of now the people are perceiving, oh, come on, is a clean girl. Mm -hmm. How can you feel like your papa? Now I'm loud, now I'm screaming. It's like, side eye. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have to think twice of how you, then clearly there's certain misconceptions about you. In real life? Yeah. So yeah. what do you think is the biggest misconception about you? Um, I don't know. There must be something where like, people think I'm like this, but I'm actually different to what they I think, think people about. think I'm an asshole. For real? Yeah. Why? I don't know. No, man, there must be, like, where, where do you think they're getting the wrong source from? Um, I, I really, I think people haven't interacted with me, but a lot of times it's when me and somebody else part ways and mm -hmm. whatever that person says about me, mm -hmm. that's where they get the source from of, oh, no, she's fucked up, and then people will run with that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, until they really interact with me, I'm quite, like, just chilled and, yeah. Yeah, your vibes, I'm, I'm shocked. People think you're an asshole. I mean, you're a Jita, so the Jitas get it, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the Jitas are very calm, they oh, get so it. Oh, so the honeys. Yeah, the honeys are a bit odd, I won't lie. For real? Yeah, and I like honeys. You, 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 you know, like, um, there's a, like, this conception, like, whenever you get into the industry, that people say the industry is fake. Yeah, fully. You always hear that from the beginning, even before you're in the industry. Yeah. So you are, like, you are telling me, like, what, what has been your experience, like, in the industry, like a lot of people with the honeys, you haven't been getting along with them? Um, I get along, not that I get along or I don't get along, I'm really in my corner, but yeah. some of the people that I've interacted with have really moved in certain ways that I would not understand. Mm -hmm. And just obviously spread a certain level of whatever they spread. Mm -hmm. And then just shit always comes out to be real like it's like okay cool you'll say i was fucked up but in the end the realness will come out of who you are mm -hmm. to the people or whatever kamu did was actually not a real thing mm -hmm. right yeah but the industry is really fake bro you don't have real friends mm -hmm. obviously it's a business i think if everybody could take it like that um we are all like in competition work, like yeah, yeah but people don't take it like that because you taking it in a different way but my biggest lesson was shop fair day we can be cool but that person's looking you looking at you as competition mm -hmm. and maybe you coming with the general sense and it's mm. not like that do you feel you have competition um in the game yeah what what do you, in terms of what like you're saying like we are at the end of the day like it's competition so do you feel there's no common there's no there's one that i take as competition there's people that i respect for their craft but nobody that i would sit there and be like Oh, she's competition now. So you're just above all these girls. Like, they're not even competition. Don't put words in my mouth. I never said that. Like, they I don't, never they got said that. They got dancers. These no, girls, they got dancers. No, it's not that, bro. They ain't putting up with the Louis shoe. I just They think, ain't putting up with the no, B class. No, 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 they no. still in the H1. You know what I'm saying? They not you competition. You being so messy right now. <laughs> no, man. I think uh -huh. I respect people's crafts. Yeah. Um, I don't think... And you have to be like that. It's a game, bro. It's a mind so game. Who do you, you say you respect people's crafts. Who do you respect? I respect Wafla. I respect Kogo. Kogo. Like, I think Kogo can really go against Bruce when it comes to mixing. I respect mm -hmm. her. Like, nothing like that. Um, yeah. Those are my top two females. Uh -huh. Nothing weird to the other females. But I think Wafla and Kogo, for me, are, like, top two. For real? Yeah. Like, you ain't showing love to the males? What males? <laughs> I'm ripping the females, bro. Sorry. Get a male in contact. I'm here with the females, dog. We need to go ahead. We need to lead this piano stuff. Nah. Okay. To talk about piano stuff, let's talk about piano. Like, okay. What made you gravitate to that genre specifically? I think it's... Because it's like new. It's so, a dance, like you grew bro. Up, you grew up listening to piano. Uh, I didn't grow up listening to piano. Mm -hmm. uh, the first song I heard was Umshove by Kavza and Lisheza. Mm -hmm. And then I was dancing. Go, Konja, what's that street in deep groove? 
The one that has chili pepper. Chili pepper. Do you guys, does it have a name? Okay, shop. But DK, like so it's yeah. people, you guys know the street, right? Yeah. So I used to dance there, go chili pepper, and then uh, I heard the song, I'm sure of it, by Gabza. Yeah. And then be- that was before, way before I met Kila and everything. Mm-hmm. So shop, Rajaiva, Rajaiva, met Kila after I'm being viral. Mm-hmm. Jobe's song, now Jobe's out. And then Kila's like, yo, bro, shop, I know you, you did Jobe and you mm-hmm. do- said you don't really want to do this music thing, mm-hmm. but I really think you should go into it. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, oh, grr. I ain't sure. Because mm-hmm. also with Jobe, JR actually wrote JR Africa. He yeah, wrote that verse for JR me. Africa. Maybe you, you call him by his like, Instagram, I had to. Instagram handle. Because there's too many JRs, guys. <laughs> JR Africa really. Which other JR is he? Uh, there's JR Echo. There's a lot oh, of JRs. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, photographers. So JR yeah. wrote that verse for me with Jobe. Mm-hmm. That was a different experience. It sounded dope. Mm-hmm. And then they put Kamo Manje there, so I was just like, well, that's a bit wild. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Kilo was like, yo, bro, I really feel like you can do it. And then that's the only reason that I actually started falling in love with making piano music. Okay, so you would say, like, maybe Kila was involved in that process. Um, and obviously, man, like, um, Kila Kao obviously ended up passing away. Yeah. Um, when is it, two years now? Yeah. Um, how did you feel um, when you got the news? And where were you when you actually got the news that he passed away? Um, I was home when I found out about it. I think the only thing that got me messed up is I feel like Kila deserves so much more mm-hmm. than what he had currently, mm-hmm. even just with his work situation. Mm-hmm. Um, Kila was really just a loyal person in general. Loyal. Yeah, very yeah. loyal to the people that he believed in. I really feel like um, he just deserved way more. He deserves somebody who is going to push him, somebody who is going to be fair towards him because mm-hmm. he was not really a malicious business mind. He trusted you with business and would do the craft. Mm-hmm. So when he passed on, it was more of like, okay, damn, because he had posted that video with you. So just seeing it happen was just really wild because I really felt like Kila would have been one of us, like one of the pioneers of piano. Mm. Yeah, and I think he really deserved way more than what he had. Would you say he put you on? Okay. Yeah, fully. I feel like he he solid solidified me. Mm. Yeah, credit. There's really nothing to lose. Mm. Yeah. And then do you feel um, piano right now is obviously like the hottest genre coming out of in the SA. world. Yeah. In the world. In the world. Okay. Um, in the world. In the world. Yeah. You see, Nigerians are also like. Um, same piano as this. They are taking it after they beat of us. Of course. Of course they are taking it. So what do you say? Of course, because it's a it's a big machine. Anybody yeah. would want to take accountability or they want to take it, but it's not yeah. theirs. That's just the real part it's of not? it. It's not? It's not theirs. Okay. So piano is ours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't you know piano is ours? I obviously I do. Exactly. But I'm not seeing what's happening on social media. Like they're saying, um, yes, piano originated in South Africa, but... We made it harder. Yeah, but it's not the yeah. same. That's the problem. Like, mm-hmm. as much as you could make a car better, it's still not the actual thing. And at the same time, people, Dali is huge, Mniga is huge. Mm-hmm. The only song that they have, Piano, that's huge, is that Ama Piano, Piano. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a, a, a shake. Mm-hmm. But as far as the real source, that's South Africa's, bro. And the only thing we need to do for me is just better promoted and have bigger brands. The problem there is they have bigger brands mm. and Nigerians support each other. South Africans don't really do that. So South Africans don't support each other? Not fully. I don't think it's like that, to why, be quite honest. Why do why you feel like South Africans don't support each other? Um, I just think you look at the disrespect that a lot of bigger artists than us are getting already mm-hmm. and you kind of see that there's really no value that they put to the artists like that. The disrespect? Yeah. Please speak on that. What you mean? I mean, if you're like El Tito and you've done so much for the game, South mm-hmm. Africans won't take it in more of like, we respect your hard work because you are an artist, right? Yeah. So it's like, what can you do for me now? Rather it's, than yeah, what you did yeah. all these years. It's yeah. more of like, ah, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. then, okay, we actually respect the time you were here and your impact that you've actually done for mm. piano. That's how I take it. And it's the real, I mean, do you disagree? Uh, I don't, I don't disagree. I'm actually looking at, um, someone was actually speaking on that, funny enough. He was like saying, um, us as Africans, um, we respect, we don't actually respect music and the craft of music. Yeah. We respect what's popping now. Yeah, what's hyping, hype. what's popping now. Yeah. Ah. 
I, I heard, I heard, I heard, you know, you got a couple of, like, words to say for a couple of people in the industry. Like who? Seema. Is Seema in the industry? Whoa. Wait, is she? I, that's what I thought. I, 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 that's what I thought. I thought she was in the industry. Is she? Guys, please answer. <laughs> So there's clearly beef between you and Seema. What beef? You say I think, like for me personally, regarding the um, Seema situation, um, I think I realized, make G say allegedly, Kamuhelo said allegedly. I have never said anything about the podcast. I've never watched their podcast. Only after the show, I was like, okay, now I'm shook. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, I think respectfully, she said whatever she wanted to say. Honestly, for me, I'm not really gonna give somebody a platform of who I'm not trying to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gotta keep it moving. That's the best way. Are you looking to resolve a little bit of the issue? Who has the issue? Is it me? No. Okay. No, I don't have an issue. Like, for me, it's like McG brought that thing forward and um, when he brought that thing forward, he said allegedly. That's what he does on his interviews. That's how I, why. So now I'm wondering on TikTok, people are saying, uh, Kimang, I watch this girl's video on TikTok and she's yeah. like, uh, Seema's response to Kamon Pela Obo. And allegedly, I was on some, the podcast is boring, or I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then she said, I'm going to eat cheese beef. So for me, I just think. So did you say the podcast was boring? No, to who? So where did it come from? Bro, that's the craziest shit. Okay. Like, so you never said that No. At all. Okay. And that's the thing, that's what I'm saying, that make G plants shit and then it blows out. So for her to say that without without really getting so factual. So Mac G, I just out of thin air said, come on, Pella said. But who would I have said it to? Did you see anything of me no. saying that? No. Have you ever seen me with Mac G? No. That's crazy. That's wild. So when she, I think for me, it's like, I, I'm aware of McG. McG will plunge it. Even when I went to his interview, mm -hmm. it was more like he'll put a seed. And mm -hmm. that's why he said allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly is like, it might be true or not true. So how you respond to it is up to you. Okay. And I think for me, the way she responded was, okay, cool. How did she respond? What did she say? I don't know. Just watch the video, I guess. No, I'm asking you. I'm not going to go watch her. No, I mean, obviously she came. Um, she just said some stuff about I'm an Igi cheese, you know? Yeah. So it's like, if that's how you feel, baby, then that's good. But I'm trying to be do bigger, so I don't want to speak about Seema. Let's speak about Tyler, Grammy. Yeah, right. that's Which where it's at. <laughs> not a YouTuber, sorry. No, 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 no disrespect, but yeah. It's Grammy, Tyler. Like, can we talk about that? Like, that's real shit of mm -hmm. where we trying to be. But mm -hmm. in terms of if you're going to hear something about me and not respectfully respect it on mm -hmm. some and come for my craft, mm -hmm. then there's really nothing I can do apart from just let you be mm -hmm. and speak about people that I'm trying to be. Okay. You want to speak about Tyler? What do you, what, <gasps> what you, what you, what you want to say about her when you I am so proud of her. Mm -hmm. Like, I think she she is repping us, bro. Like, the Grammy to thing the is amazing. Yeah. And I like her personality. Like, Me too. We're speaking about that. Fully. Earlier. Like, yeah. she's amazing. Like, yo, that's what it is. Not whoever said one on TikTok. Like, Shafir, what's up? We trying to go to the world. You can't be worried about, like, no disrespect of where you are in life. Mm -hmm. But in real shit, it's like, you heard shit. I think the situation could have been handled a way better of her just letting it go. Mm -hmm. But now you came at my craft. There's no beef. I still respect you. Shop Fede, Grammy, what's up? Tyler, what's up? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Period. Came at your craft. I think your, your craft can't be questioned, I think, personally. You know, um... You've put in the work and you've actually, for the fact that you actually go out and make sure that, look, I can dance, but I'm actually going to give you guys a um, show yeah. and have 
dances yeah. and give you guys a production. Yeah. Like the effort that you put in is to be commended. Like not a lot of people are investing in whatever they do. Yeah. It's I just like ah, that. come on stage, move around. I don't have to because nowadays, right now, we don't respect the art. Yeah. You know, a lot of people now, if I'm pretty, if a girl thinks she's pretty, she feels like, oh, how can I make money? Let me just be a DJ. Yeah. Like that seems to be um, the, I don't know, the trend that's happening right now. Okay. People are not respecting craft. Okay. They feel like, um, let me find a bag. I can just do this. Even though I don't even love doing that. Do you, like how do you feel about that? For me personally, yeah. I just feel like uh, DJing give a platform to females to actually go into the industry, mm -hmm. whether they love it or not, whether they respect it or not. It's really a thing of there's more females in the industry, and that's what I love. I think maybe because of DJing. I mean DJing, mm -hmm. but there's music behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going against what you're saying, but for mm -hmm. me, it's if that is the gate for a lot of females to make it into the game. Let it rather be that. And then within the game, we can kind of criticize then, like, who is the best. Mm -hmm. But I can't really fault the fact that uh, a platform has been given for more females to be in the game mm -hmm. and females can stand against chance. I mm -hmm. would never really be against that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether the craft is there or not, those are other stuff. That's a different topic. But on some real stuff, I mean, a lot of females are really amazing. Gogo's the best, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, but like, I mean, you want to have a real conversation about it. Like yeah. You, and you're speaking about craft. Um, so you feel as long as like the more females in the game, regardless of how it's done, you cool with it? I just feel like we don't, we don't really understand the process because right now the process is all of them are flooding in. Mm -hmm. And then the real ones are going to stand within the years. That's what you've seen, right? Mm -hmm. So there's difference with people lasting in the industry for three years and 10 years. Mm -hmm. The realness is going to come out, but it's not a thing of you should just cut down people actually making a living, mm -hmm. especially because piano is really creating a lot of income for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So if it's changing lives, dog, then why not? And then the realness will show, dog, the toughness. Mm -hmm. Within the years, like, can you run 10 years, 20, 15? Mm -hmm. Only the realists survive. You've been here for five, like what, since 2019? Six. Six, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're in here. I mean, um, this episode, is actually gonna drop on Valentine's Day. You know that. Valentine's is coming. Where's your boyfriend? Uh, you are sitting at low. Ah, lonely. Do, 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 Valentine. How do you feel about Valentine's Day? There's really no feeling towards that. Are you are you are you single? Are you in a relationship? Fully single. I've been single for three years. So. What? Yeah. Look at Cabello, Cabello. <laughs> He's coming like Cabello, Cabello, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, come on, come on. Here's a joint. Come on, come on, side eye. No. I've been single for three years. Oh, um, God. Yeah. I just really feel like the energy is really not there. Not for me. Like, I genuinely want to be in love. I genuinely want to be with the person. But I think the problem is that understanding the person. Why is that the problem? Because you don't know people's intentions, bro. It's never yeah. really clear from the get-go. Yeah. I really respect people who have situations from the first day. It's like, yeah. that's your nigga, right? Yeah. But if you blown up and whatever, niggas just want to... And the hun is worse because niggas just want to... There's so many intentions. Yeah. Niggas want to fuck. If they don't want to fuck, he didn't run. Like, that's the same thing. Yeah. They just want to be with you because of your name. Yeah. But for me, it was just like, I really need to get somebody I can rely on. Uh -huh. Just as a human being. If I'm not getting that, I'm out. So then what attributes are you looking for in a guy? I really am looking at of like I'm looking for somebody I can rely on, firstly. So whether he's a businessman, whether is um whatever you do in your career. Yeah. You gotta have a bit of like stack. Not like a lot of stack, but yeah. take care of yourself. Uh -huh. But mostly I really need like a support structure, somebody I can really rely on because majority of the shit that I go through is not like normal. Mm -hmm. And I really need like a real guide of, okay, babe, what do you think about firing everyone in my company? If I'm maybe emotional and yeah. then you can tell me, I my baby, I, maybe just move a different way. I really uh -huh. need somebody I can rely on apart from vibes and somebody who just wants to fucking just like, oh, I fuck a moon pillar. I don't want that. Mm. Yeah. So it's on pause. It's on pause. Yeah. About Shell, I'm like, you guys like make you like a real. Guys, the last time I got Shell, I had, hey, it was like 
2020? No, man, guys, like, <laughs> like what? what <laughs> come on, like, this show is about realness, hey? Like, I swear. Last time someone shouted you was like four years ago. Is that what you said to me? It's four years ago. Yeah. Stop capping. Like, because niggas are also intimidated. Guys, do you guys? Do you guys what do makes you you think, why? Why you think guys are intimidated by you? Um, cause, bro, if I'm out and nobody can come to me directly, it's either intimidated by me or my surrounding. Cause I'm always with niggas, so maybe they're just looking like ah. So these some, niggas that you wait, they just cock blocking you. No, no, but no. You like been that's my team. Years. Like Shella, like somebody saying, "Yo, I want you, and I want to take you out on a date." Yeah, it's been four years. What? I swear. And your DM. You seem so shook. I feel like you're not believing me. No, I don't. I swear, bro. Well, tell me about your DMs. My DMs are, like, they're not popping, but, like, the niggas who are coming forward are not really, like... This is somebody I can be with. How? How do you know? Um, because maybe they on private and then it's just giving a random nigga on the profile. Now you're just like, okay, so this nigga's DMing me. But I really like live interaction. Like, if you want me, come live yeah, and jive. But no, no one can approach you surrounded by niggas. So maybe that, like, the only way to get to you is a DM, right? Yeah. Then, so, and what? Then what needs to happen? Come like, direct. <laughs> come direct. <laughs> what you mean? The DM is like, you can find, I've, I've found love in a DM before. Really? Yeah. That's like, wild. Was she like, like, or were you DMing or she DMed you? I, I mean, it's worked both ways, actually. Oh, you said you found love, so which yeah. one is Okay, the one I found love, I DMed her. Exactly, but you a nigga. I'm not yeah. gonna go around DMing niggas. It doesn't work like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not saying DM niggas, but niggas that DM you, like. No, bro, what, what getting like, you give, like, First of all, come on, let's think about it. Let's break it down this way. <laughs> guys can approach you because you're surrounded by guys. Okay. So the only way a guy could literally speak to you is by DM, right? Okay. So, like, why are we, why are we being, like, closing that off when that's the only channel where a guy can actually... But like, I can't respond to every DM of a nigga hitting me up. Obviously. Because I need to check your profile. So if you're on, you so are if on you are, private... So if I shoot a DM, in a, like, I shoot in a DM, you know what I'm saying, and then... Um, like as in you, like as in LT. No, not LT. Oh. No. Okay. So, I, like, when a guy shoots in a DM, okay, and he shoots in a DM, when you open and see the message, what are you looking for? So, when I open the message, it's firstly how you coming at me. Yeah. Secondly, it's like how do you look, and then it's on private. There's I can't respond. What if you're a psychopath? Have you ever responded to a DM? Of a no. Guy? So you don't respond to DMs completely. Unless you like, unless you're a hun. Yeah. Yeah, and showing love. But niggas, I don't know, dog. Like, nah. So how is it, like, how are you going to find this love where you surrounded you? I'm going to go out to restaurants and then come at me, my nigga. A real person needs to, if you, the realest nigga, within all of those people, yeah. including my dad, you need to step up. There's no other way to catch me. Yeah, because I don't feel like, like you just been single for like four years or three it's years. It's good though. Is it? Yeah. Why? How's it Because working? I can actually focus on the hustle. Real talk. But we all need love. Yo, y'all, y'all need love. I'm you good, love. my nigga. <laughs> we all need sex. Uh, there's stuff, there's stuff. Like what? There's vibrators and stuff. <laughs> it's not the real thing. It's not the real, it's not the real thing. Nah, bro, I'm good. I want to so three years, no love, no Valentine. Nothing. What do you usually do on Valentine's Day? What do people do? Sleep or drink or party. Sleep or drink. <laughs> is is that not real? <laughs> She's nodding her head. It's a real thing. Wow. Guys, come on. Guys. What do you do on Valentine's, Cabello? Exactly. <laughs> So come what do you do on Valentine's? Sleeps and drinks on Valentine's. What do you do on Valentine's? Uh, it depends, like, what my situation is at the moment. What is your situation right now? Uh, it's not Valentine's yet, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, I'm just saying right now. So what if Valentine's is soon. What are you going to be doing? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, honestly, Valentine's is cancelled this year. After we lost to Nigeria, like, it's just like... We're going I feel like that's such a PR answer. No, that like, is so PR of no, you. We're going to oh, play, God, we're, I'm so hurt. No, like we are hurt. So, are you single? <laughs> you know, um, I'm the one that asks questions. I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have to answer. Like, are you single? I'm the one that asks questions on the show. You know. It's a two way. Um, like it's we'll, a we'll it's episode. a Al show. So what's up? We we'll take the, we'll it's a takeover, baby. We'll, so yes or no? Why we'll don't do you just? We'll do an episode where. Girl, I'm a, if he's dating you and he can't even answer this, <laughs> run. <laughs> Are you single? Yes or no? That's so simple. Why? Is it, it's such a simple question. Anyway, like, uh. <laughs> Sad, eh? Run, Kelly, run. Run for your life. Let's move on. I mean, um, Kamu, I mean. It's over for you. Kamu, no, yo, Kamu, can we focus? Like, Answer the question. You, you dropped a hard record in December. <laughs> <laughs> Standing our business. You dropped a hard record uh, called Dali in yeah. December. and... Do you have a Dali? Kamu, can we. Can we, can we just... Oh, was that was that dedicated to someone? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I uh, dropped a hot single titled mm -hmm. Dali. Not um, in December, in November. November. Yes. And like was like a super hot record in December. Yeah. Like, um. It it went up like literally after a week. I think you had already clocked like one million. Um, was it streams or views? Yeah, I was like number one on Shazam before mm -hmm. it dropped. That's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. That was God, bro. Let me, can I be honest? That uh -huh. was God, bro. Like, um, within that time, months before, I uh -huh. think, because you were at the Sal, Sal home thing, right? Where we, yeah, okay, never mind. No, but like, I mean, you've already put it up. Yeah, we it. were at the Sal home where we actually speak about God. Home Sal. Yeah. Home Sal, yeah. yeah. Where we speak about God and talk about stuff. And mm -hmm. I really had a confession there of like, yo, I was actually about to quit my career. And I was like, yo. That's crazy. Yeah, I was really. Why would Gabon want to quit music? Because not quit music, but just quit the whole career. It's not easy, bro. Like, real talk, it's, it ain't easy. And it's only, like, it's hectic. So I was really on some, okay, shop, pra God. I am, I'm fighting for my life, but mm. I don't have a hard record. There's a lot of stuff that don't make sense to me. And if I have to quit right now. So I started my praying journey and it stopped like in March. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I picked it up from June. That's mm -hmm. where I realized like, you can't just go back to God and say, yo God, I want this. And then he's going to bring it back. It's really a relationship that you build over time. Mm -hmm. So I was just saying like, yo God, I really need this. I'm not sure how I feel. Mm -hmm. I really need a sign if I should quit or carry on. Mm -hmm. And then, bro, when I went to, let me tell you, recording Dali mm -hmm. was just like, I hopped, got into studio, okay, shop, chilling. This guy actually had lyrics on the, the Dali beat. Mm -hmm. He removed them. He decided to remove, mm -hmm. uh, that's Khalil. He decided to remove all mm -hmm. those uh, vocals that he had before. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, come on, just listen to this beat, right? And then I'm like, okay, cool. Let me just try something. If it doesn't work, we scratch it. If it works, we carry on. Bro, the first time I laced one record, I don't record once, me, like, probably but my one, two times, mm -hmm. then we get it right. Mm -hmm. I recorded Dali once, bro. From there, I knew it was a hit, and I knew it was from God, because that was a sign of, now you got this. But that shit was crazy, because even the way it blew up, the Shazam, the It Going Viral, that was the first song I never really pushed with the challenge until it went viral. So I only made the Dali challenge until the song was actually viral on TikTok. And I've never moved like that. That was like godly power. Like, mm. that was wild, bro. Shout out to Bro God. Like, um, it, it, it actually surprises me and shocks me. Yeah. That you actually did think about quitting. Yeah. Like, what mind state were you in where you actually felt like you wanted to quit music? I mean, depression hits, um, not feeling enough hits. There's a lot of things that come to your mind. It's real life stuff that everybody goes through. But I think it's just different because people think we artists, 
everything just needs to be. I think anybody in the entertainment industry is not normal mm -hmm. because the life is not normal. Mm. You know, it's not like a, you wake up at this time, go back at this time. 24 hours you're working on this thing. Mm -hmm. I don't have kids, I don't have a dog. The only thing I care about is family and this hustle mm -hmm. in my head. That's mm -hmm. why I, I even kept it drama wise, I'd rather sacrifice having drama out and not entertain that for my work to go forward, you know? So in that state where you've dreamt of yourself being so big at this time, and that goes back to the chats that we were having at the home cell of, bro, some stuff are really at God's time. Mm. There's really nothing you can do, nothing you can say, unless God says, this is what it is and that, that's what goes. Mm. So I was really depressed for like two years, like hectically, like yeah. hectic into depression. Mm. But obviously God gave me the power to say, hey, let me actually capitalize on performance. Mm. You know, cause I wasn't dropping music, but my mind was like, okay, shut up. Fine, Joe, you, cause I'm really real with myself. Mm. Shut up, Joe, you're not dropping a hit right now, but you need to kind of stay alive. Mm. And you need to kind of create something that's gonna keep you very unique. Mm. Work on your performances, right? So I started adding more dances, performing in a unique way that nobody would get anywhere to make my, to keep myself alive because the music was not coming out. So when Dali came out, it was like, okay, shit, like, we up right now, you know? Mm. And the management that I got, which is Nevo, I hope shit goes well, cause- Nah, Nevo is solid. I've had bad experiences, ah! Cause I had to change like four managers, it's been going down, you know? Like, a lot of people will be surprised that Gabon Pella was like, because like people looking from outside, it's like, oh man, you famous, you got it all. Yeah. You were depressed for two years. What would depress you for two years? Hearing about yourself, oh, I was fucked up, is gonna mentally fuck you up, mm. right? Just because somebody thinks of that, I was at that point of whatever people think about me was a real life thing of, I used to take that in and say, okay, maybe I'm fucked up because mm. I didn't have a character within me to stand for, well, 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 well. You're, you mm. understand? Mm. So I went through losing myself into, even now I haven't really found myself, but finding God has given me a lot of peace. And that's why it's like, even Dali happening, mm -hmm. I think Dali was also God's sign of, it's, it was God's sign of, no matter what you have, you'll never fully be at peace mm -hmm. unless it's me. Because mm -hmm. even with Dali, it's like, okay, shop you in London, you're doing the O2, sold out shows, mm -hmm. but you're still fighting with yourself and your soul. There's only one answer for that. Mm. Yeah. So that's what it is. It's crazy to me because a lot of people feel like if you obtain a certain level of success, you'll be actually you, you happy. You are happy. No. I mean, it depends on your character, mm. to be mm -hmm. quite honest. Mm -hmm. um, why, why, why do you feel like caused you to feel depressed? Like what, what you feel was missing in your life? To, I feel to make like you feel whole. what missed in my life was me. I lost myself. Mm. I completely lost myself through the journey. Cause at first it's like, if you have yourself, there's nothing that's gonna shake you. Mm -hmm. But now obviously I just wanted to be better, a better person for the people that I'm working with. Now I'm just chilling there like, How if you can't even recognize yourself of, okay, this is not what I'm gonna settle for. This is what, not what I'm gonna accept. This is not something I would go for. And now you floating because you're trying to make the right decision. You've completely lost self. I lost myself through trying to make people feel okay. That's mm. how I lost myself. Mm. It was more of like, okay, shop, El Tiro feel like Camo's fucked up. Okay, shop, what do you feel like is fucked up about, about Camo, El Tiro? Mm. Mm. Now I just feel like you're very sassy, then I'd wanna fix that just to make the next person happy. Mm. But I just really forgot about my character at hand of, for you to become this person, you were this. Mm. You were very firm, you were very strict, you had certain beliefs, and that is what kind of built your character and is gonna build your career going forward. Mm. The same way we can speak, Pori Ubwa, his mind. Like, electricity. I would never be that person. I would be more of like, oh, you feel like it's my electricity? Okay, like, let me just help you out. Mm. That's the difference in character, mm. yeah. I saw you were uh, like in, um, I think London. Yeah. You were with Davido. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that, actually. That experience was so crazy, dog. But those niggas live a crazy life. Which like, niggas? 
like the African people. You are African. What do you mean African? I'm people? African, but like the Nigerians, <laughs> like, bro, feeling twenty five thousand people in so, London. So is Africans a don't think they're Africans. So, okay, yeah, African I, it's it's kind of different. I'm like, what like, is different? <laughs> Why Mums as you guys think toxic. you're Africans? I'm joking. Oh. Mm. But yeah, like the Davidos, the Burners, the Whiz Kids, bro, mm. they on a whole different scale. Like seeing them at Afro Nation, seeing them, it's it's wild. The no, life there is wild. To break it down. Like, like 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 what do you mean? The as much as you see, if you dealing with like a small capacity, right? You're mm -hmm. thinking, oh my gosh, life is so wild. Mm -hmm. Dog, those people sit in their lockers, can't really go out, can't really walk around mm -hmm. the arena just to be normal. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people want their attention. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want them there. A lot of people support them. And that's what I realized is different with the show. We do shows as we have supporting us. So we are Tito, mm -hmm. Focalistic, mm -hmm. Bobby, Waflats to support mm -hmm. us. Those people, they, a show is you really have to hear my music and only my music. So people will get there, I'll open the doors at seven, I'll only get a stage at nine mm -hmm. and perform my whole catalog. Mm. And when I'm saying it's done, it's done. Mm. But it's only one catalog, it's only that person. It's nothing else. Mm. It's not a, you're gonna hear, oh God, like nobody else's music <laughs> apart from the artist. Mm. So if Kamon Pila says, I'm hopping on stage at seven and I jump on stage at nine, you are there to experience Kamon Pila music. Mm -hmm. from my wackest songs to my brightest songs. Mm -hmm. That's all you're there for. We're mm -hmm. doing shows way differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fully. So how does Kamon Pella, and Kamon Pella is like a brand right now. Yeah. Um, where are we taking this brand? Where do we see ourselves? Um, you're like, what, 23, 24, right? 23. You're, still, you're like very young right Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself in like, Come on, Pella, in five years. Like, where do we see ourselves? Selling out arenas, bro. Mm -hmm. That's is that, what I want. Is that, is that the, the, the dream? The yeah, goal? selling mm -hmm. out arenas. Dope music, like dope. Because I feel like also, SA, like after Brenda and Lebu, SA does not have that level of consistency from Hans mm -hmm. of actually dropping. Oh my gosh, like, ah. you see how kids are crazy about Brenda mm -hmm. and Lebu? I feel like that's what I want to be. Like, I, I, I really want to work towards that and mm -hmm. selling out arenas to the world, being the most booked artist from South Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, following Tyler's doing amazing. Just being part of that catalog. That's what I want. I actually can see that, like, literally for you. I see I it though. I won't lie. For real. Yeah. Things crossed. <laughs> I, many Things crossed. Okay. Who uh. would you like to work with? Who, who, who? Who who you like think like oh man this person is exceptionally talented I'd love to work with them who would you want to work with SA or overseas everything oh guys I would love to have a record with Dodger Cat I feel like she's exceptionally amazing I like amazing. her too. I like her <laughs> she needs to call me and just get it right with her ancestors okay I get that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Doja Cat would be dope. Nandipo's really dope right now. It's on the come up. He's we have a record. It's fire. Uh -huh. We gotta do more. Yeah. So you will come on Bella and Doja Cat. What song is this? Is it a piano or hip hop? It she has to be on piano. Kanti, what am I why, rapping? Like, why, why can't Kanting you rapping in Vezu. Oh. So you feel I, you, you feel you can't hop on a hip hop record? I have been on a hip hop record, but I need record? to push us. Huh? You been it hasn't been record? out. It, it's just it, like guys. Who is hip hop song? I have song? slow jam. I have no, hip hop. Wait, 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 wait. But like, I, you've been on the hip hop record. Who is hip hop record? Uh, uh, ish. No, we want to yeah, know. Come on. I've been just no. I have a hip hop record. Come on, got bars. This year, four. <laughs> this year, a little bit of four is bars. Is that supposed to be me? Uh, no, this year, this year, these four bars. Hit us with like a little bit of four bars. Yeah. I. Let me introduce you the correct way. I job. <laughs> Al Tito's about to do a couple of four bars no, first. They've heard me rap forever. <laughs> we want to hear this. Like, I, I'll be genuinely interested to hear a couple of them. No, 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 no. You will, you will fully. So, you, you got, like, you got some I do have a hip hop joint. I just think, let me build it up. You see, Daddy was singing, Wobble. Mm -hmm. So, Daddy just gives me a platform to actually take out singing music. Because on Daddy, I'm actually singing. So, I can take out singing music and then from there, hip hop. Okay. Dinsang. 
Let's talk about the genres. We're in the music already. Give me your top five uh, piano artists. Top five piano artist, Young Stunner. Um, that's number five. We're going from five to one. Ah, okay. Yeah. Damn. Um, I don't think I have a top five. No, come on, come on. Like, I think probably a, like four, three. Okay, give us okay. a top three. Let me give one Amos, two Young Stunner, um, Nkosazana Tota. Three. Um, I was thinking about the type of music that I actually like. Yeah, that's your personal flavor. Um, I think Dali's fire. Dali, Dali Wonga. So he's really, four. he's dope. And then five. Mahu. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Even give another, you know, she's our next guest. She's okay. fire. That's dope. Really? Yeah. It's fire. Um, it's give me a top five hip hop artist. Top five, top five, AKA. Yeah. Cass. That's number one. AKA. Number one, AKA. Yeah, second Cass. Cass. Um, KO. KO, yeah. Um, I'm also looking at le like longevity, like 10 years. Yeah. Um, Blackie. Uh -huh. Nasty. Why is Nasty not here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Nasty. Mm -hmm. AKA Cass, Blackie, and who else did I mention? Last one. Last one. I don't know the last one, but that is my top four. That's top four. That's all good. What legacy are you trying to leave behind? I think what I'd like is for people to remember me for the problematic spirit. Like, like I'm, I'm a go-getter. You don't understand? You said problematic. Yeah, say problematic. Go -getter, go -getter, uh, well. In my own way. <laughs> it's problematic in the game. Yeah. Okay, I'm joking. Uh, I just want people to feel like Hardworking, ambition driven, um, breaking boundaries, breaking. I'm the first female to actually perform at the O2. Talk so, that. Talk yeah, that, period. girl. Talk yeah. that, girl. That's like, say like, it one more time. First female artist to perform at the O2 arena. Yeah, these guys think O2 is in Venda. Tell them where it is. The O2 in London, baby. 25,000 people. Ooh, talk about that. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, just boundary breaking, making a way for people. That's what I want. And then people can take over. But for me, I just want to like lay the path, like the labels and the brandas. That's what I want to do. Legendary people, what people can't forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personally, period. All right. BET um, performance, you know, Grammy performance, uh -huh. first female. I can see you at the Grammys. I see myself there. I can. On stage, fully. Can, yeah, BET awards, MTV, yeah, all of those things. Fully. Um, there's a lot of people watching now that love you and support you. Yeah. Uh, do you have a message for them? What I'm going to say is just believe in me, please. I'd appreciate that. And I love and appreciate everyone. Believe in yourself fully. Nobody knows where you're going apart from you. So always just keep that on P. Stepping on next. Nothing else. Come on, Pilar. Signing up. Daga. She's a skirt skirt girl. What she's do you mean? Keep it on P. Like, you confuse the people. Like, if someone deep keeps it, keep, keep it, it on, on P, P like, bro. Keep it on P. P, 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 P. I don't. My ass and fits. My ass, my ass. Right. Yeah, fully. Come Just on. hustle. Oh. Thank you for coming on the show, Kamu. Appreciate that. Um, I, I think, like, really, that, like, there's, like, a really, like, and I'm not saying because you're here, um, I literally feel like there's, like, a, literally a bright future like when it comes to you and your brand thank um, you i think a lot of people like want to see you win thank you I appreciate um that. what you're doing is not being done by i can't I, I i don't know a female artist like you in this country like no for real for what you do um, what do i do the music you do the 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 effort that you put in okay. in your stage presence the effort you put in in your visual presence okay um and i feel like you are gonna make a big mark in this game i appreciate um, that and I, I i feel like you should self carve you know what i'm saying realize um what you've built yeah and just take it to the motherfucking top um okay. we support you here on the ltl podcast um Thank you for putting up. And um, just want to say to everybody that's watching, um, 
Much love to everybody watching. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Fully. We are fully. And, Come on, be uh, co-host. I'm just briefing. Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm just putting in like how Kipi G, but my fifty percent of the company, you know what I'm saying? She had, she had to mess it up and talk about it. <laughs> uh, Kipi, you wear sneakers? Yeah, fully. I'm a sneakerhead. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know you're not out there washing your sneakers, or whoever washes your sneakers with Handy Andy. You know what I'm saying? Um, Are you saying I wash my sneakers with Handy Andy? No, I'm saying I know you're not. Oh. This is like the freshest sneaker brand in the country. Fully. Keeping your, your, your sneakers fresh. Um, crap protect. I appreciate that. They got you, so I wouldn't let you leave. You know what I'm saying? Come here and just leave empty handed. Mm -hmm. So, just for you. Thank crap you. Crap protect. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. I also want to give you uh, El Tito, um truck I had. Uh, what's your favorite? Like, what's your favorite? I don't Can know I have all three? Uh, I like, like, I'm gonna say it. No, it's one lady. No, you can't say no. Who can say one? No, all three, please. I got you, girl. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> guys. Um, yo, we out. We'll catch you guys on another one. El Tito podcast. El Tito, come on, Pella. What's up? We out, baby. Let's Thank go. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Why are you saying only one? <laughs> I'm coming for you.